Office 27 introduced the ribbon interface, and that's been carried on through subsequent versions of Excel and Office applications. The ribbon was designed to provide the easiest, most intuitive access to the tools that were often already available in the software. They were just buried under multiple levels of flyout menus and dialog box tabs. When a pivot table is selected, we get two contextual tabs that display on the right side of the ribbon. They include the Analyze and the Design tab. The options they provide apply specifically to pivot tables. Many of these options are covered as we address specific features of pivot tables throughout the series, but there are a few that are more general in nature and bear mentioning early on. Let's go ahead and activate the Analyze tab, and then move to the left side of the ribbon. The first option is actually found as part of the very first options that we see. Depending on the resolution of your screen, you may either see this laid out or you just may see a drop down for pivot tables in general. What we're looking for is the option that says pivot table name. And as we see, it's going to give it one of those lovely generic names that Microsoft is so famous for, like sheet one, sheet two, spreadsheet one, spreadsheet two. In this case, it's pivot table one, two, three, four. What I can tell you is naming pivot tables with simply a number and a generic pivot table prefix is not going to be useful for very long. In my opinion, these types of names should always be changed and be changed fairly early on, and that can be done simply using this option. All we need to do is replace the default name with a meaningful name. Maybe something like Sales Summary by Rep, which does accurately describe how this pivot table is organized. Once it's typed, all we need to do is press the Enter key to set the new name. Remember, there are some naming rules, like they can't contain spaces. They can contain camel case, the upper and lower case, to make them easier to read, and they really should be alphanumeric. They shouldn't contain any symbols. They also can't look like any other cell reference. In other words, if we were talking about airplanes, we could not create a name called B-52, because even though that's an airplane, it's also a cell address. The second thing we might be interested in doing as sort of an overall maintenance type of activity is physically moving the pivot table. Many of the tools we can use to create pivot tables, like the quick analysis options or recommended pivot tables, will automatically place the pivot table on its own worksheet. Pivot tables can be located anywhere in a workbook, and they do not have to be on their own worksheet. And on occasion, we might want to rearrange them or relocate them for specific purposes. If we move over to the right-hand side of the ribbon, we'll see a group called Actions. Again, if your screen resolution is set so things are really large, you'll actually see an Actions drop-down that contains these options themselves. We, of course, are interested in the Move Pivot Table option, so we'll give that a click or a tap. As is so often the case, we're given two options. One is to put the pivot table in a new worksheet, but it's already on its own worksheet, so that one really isn't that relevant. The other option is to put it on an existing worksheet. And of course, if we choose this, we need to say which worksheet we want to put it into and at what location. If we want to move it to an existing worksheet, we'll simply roll up the window, select the worksheet, and then select the destination. In this case, we're just going to scroll down below our data, select a cell, roll back down the pivot table window, and say OK. Now we can see that the pivot table and all of its tools is located on the same sheet as the data. Now, of course, if we're going to be adding and removing data, this may or may not be the best choice or at least we should organize it so one doesn't overwrite the other. But that, of course, is a choice that will need to be made based on your specific needs and how you're going to be working with the data, not only now, but in the future. The last general option we want to talk about at this point is found again on the Analyze tab, and it's all the way at the right-hand side. And once again, I do want to mention that depending on your screen resolution, you will either see the options listed out in the Show group or you'll see a show option with a drop down. There are three basic things that we can do here, one of which is really important, and that is working with the pivot table field list. If you're ever looking to get more room on your screen, you may click the close button on the pivot table field list, which at the moment may seem like a great deal until you want to get it back. Then you're not quite sure where to find it. The answer is using the show options on the analyze tab. By simply toggling the field list option on or off, we can display or hide it. The other two options we may not use quite as often, but they're important to know. 
The first one talks about working with the plus and minus buttons. In other words, the expand and contract. If we have multiple row fields, we'll see options to expand and collapse different levels of our pivot table, just like you see when you expand and collapse folders on your hard drive. Turning this feature on or off will hide the ability to expand and collapse. That may be beneficial if you're going to have other people using your file and you simply don't want them to have that access. The last option is something called field headers. This again is going to simplify what we see on screen. As we turn it on or off, again, depending on how complex your pivot table is, you will see the identifying pieces of the pivot table, the labels, appear or disappear. Now we're simply seeing some of order total, our different sales reps, and our different sales plans. With the field headers displayed, that's when we actually see that Beth, John, and Mark are row labels, and corporate, government, and private are column labels. All three of these tools are very straightforward and simple. Their benefit, though, is not always readily apparent, but as you work with pivot tables, especially as you begin working with multiple pivot tables in the same workbook, the ability to have each with a unique name, to change their location, as well as manage what is being displayed on screen, becomes simple but important tools to be aware of. Knowing how to do four fundamental things, including selecting appropriate data, creating pivot tables, modifying the layout using the pivot table fields pane, and using these options that we've just discussed, will give you a solid foundation for your use of pivot tables to simplify and summarize data in Excel.